I would hope the Labor Party. Question number 12, Jamie Lee Ross. Mr Speaker, question to the Minister of Immigration. What is the government doing to ensure that New Zealanders have first priority for jobs in the Canterbury rebuild? The Speaker, on the 9th of October, nearly three weeks ago, Minister Bennett and I announced the new Canterbury Schools and Employment Hub, a one-stop shop for employers to list vacancies and recruit from work and income, various trades training centres or where needed labour from overseas. Soon employers will be required to engage with the hub to ensure that no Kiwis are available or training before being able to recruit workers from overseas. This balanced approach will ensure that Kiwis will have first priority for jobs in the rebuild, but the reality is that the scale of the Canterbury rebuild will require some migrant workers. Supplementary question. Jamie Lee Ross. What reports has he seen on approaches to ensuring New Zealanders have priority for jobs in the Canterbury rebuild? The Honourable Nathan Speaker, Jones. interestingly, I've seen a report about two weeks ago after our announcement of a vague proposal to limit foreign workers available for the rebuild. Such an approach would significantly impact on the rebuild. It would affect families and businesses in Canterbury and slow the overall economic growth. Such a move would deter migrants coming to Canterbury and the rest of New Zealand, and that would overall impact on the $1.9 billion per year that migrants contribute to the wider economy. This, of course, was a stupid proposal from the Order. Labor Party. That's enough. Uh, Dennis O'Rourke, supplementary question. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. If the Minister's claims that New Zealanders will be favoured for jobs in Christchurch are true, why are there so many advertisements circulating in Ireland, the UK and Asia for workers in Christchurch? The Honourable Nathan Guy. Well, well, Mr Speaker, as I've said, and I alluded to in the answer to those two previous questions, the rebuild is on a such a significant scale that we will require some migrant workers. Darian Fenton. Order. Calm down. Calm Darian down. Fenton. Uh, to the Minister, if the Government is doing everything possible to ensure New Zealanders have first priority for jobs in the Christchurch rebuild, why is it estimated that half of the 30,000 workers needed for the rebuild will be brought in from overseas? The Honourable Nathan Gay. Well, we are doing everything possible that Kiwis are first in our jobs in New Zealand. And as I've said, the scale of this rebuild, some $20 billion, over the next few years will require some migrant workers. And I've just made the point that if Labor want to close down uh, migrants coming in from New Zealand, that's at detriment to our $1.9 billion a year. It's a shameful policy. Supplementary question, Tarot off level. Tanaka, Mr Speaker, thank you. Uh, to the Minister, given the impact uh, given that the impact of the recession has been disproportionately higher for Māori and in some cases unemployment figures have been triple the national average, what has the Minister done to ensure that priority is given to Māori in the Christchurch rebuild? The Hon. Nathan Gunn. Mr Speaker, I am aware that Naitahu are playing a significant role in the overall rebuild of Canterbury and the Government has invested $43 million into extra trades training places in Canterbury and of course the employment and skills hub that we're just going to introduce in the next few weeks will help every New Zealander including Māori. Jamie Lee Ross. Supplementary question, what reports has he seen on the need for foreign labour for the rebuild of Canterbury? The Honourable Nathan Mr Speaker, I've seen a number of reports on the need for foreign labour in the rebuild. One shows that as many as 30,000 extra workers in total will be needed and even with Kiwis fully engaged, a significant number will be needed from overseas. Another report describes a, a dismal, desperate and half-cocked plan to limit the number of foreign workers involved in the rebuild and the wider economy. This plan is described as blithely ignoring the economic realities to pick up a few red net votes. And of course that came from Order. David Sheriff. Order. Now, Ministers should not be attributing to other parties policies that are not remotely the responsibility of ministers. It's a pattern that's getting... It's, uh, it's, uh, I, know, I know members uh, use the report as a, as a means of, of doing this, but 
to a trip. The, the problem with it is that rarely is the description of the policy that accurate. That's the, the difficulty, and it leads to disorder. And where, and, and I, I mean, the member shouldn't be interjecting when I'm on my feet, but where members ask questions that are provocative, ministers get plenty of opportunity. Questions from their own colleagues to then, uh, you know, to describe policies in a way that may not be accurate and attribute them to other parties is, is not fair. That's not fair. And that brings to a close questions for oral answer. Uh, Honourable members, I have received a letter from Darian Fenton seeking to.